Welcome to Truvine Talks. It's Linda and Rachel. I hope that you guys can hear me. I'm working on sound, so um, doing my best here to make it good for our listeners. And um, today, Rachel and I are going to process what an exile part of ourself is according to internal family therapy systems model by Robert Schwartz. I said his name correct. Yeah, I think so. That's how I pronounce it. Nice. He has offered us so much enrichment in this therapy model and Rachel and I have started gravitating towards it, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, especially because, you know, we both feel like it goes so well with the emotionally focused therapy model that we've already been using. So it's just like expanding, you know, the way we practice. It's been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it goes so well with emotionally focused therapy. And this is the part where I'm like, okay, how does this connect with EFIT? Mm. And I love EFIT and it's so helpful and it works so well. And I'm starting to compare the two. And I think the inner child is the exile part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Rachel? Yes, it's definitely one of them. For folks who did not experience any like childhood trauma, your exiled part might be like an older version of you from a really hurtful breakup experience or, you know, something in your adult life. But I think for most of us, you know, our exile or one of our exiles is our, our child part of us, our inner child. Awesome. Um, I don't know if it's, it might be pulling up on the video, but I, I put it in there what the exile part of the self is according to the internal family therapy systems model is well, that, go ahead and read it. I'm not seeing it. Oh, I put it in the chat. See? Oh, the, okay. Thank you. Again. Well, let's show the chat. It must've been before I joined. Yes. Let me pull that. I'll just do a repeat, copy and paste. There we go. There it is. Mm -hmm. Exiles are our younger parts of self that hold emotions, vulnerability, I'm gonna say unmet needs, mm -hmm. and memories that went ignored, unresolved, and went into exile or put them away because there was no space or place to process those needs when the trauma was experienced. Yeah. yeah, so we experience this moment when we're feeling overwhelmed with shame or guilt or embarrassment, we're just humiliated, right? Or really hurt and betrayed and there's this part of us that just goes, I am never going to feel this way again. I'm going to make sure this never happens. And so that part, right, whether it be a need, an emotion, right, this vulnerable expression, mm. like you just said, gets exiled. We detach from it, right? We, we try to no longer have access to that need or that emotion. And that's when um, these protectors get created, which we talked about on our most recent podcast. And they prevent us from accessing, right? Those emotions or those needs that led to a hurtful experience. Mm -hmm. And protector parts, uh, they come up and they do a good job of keeping the vulnerable inner child safe and secure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that's amazing that our, that God designed us in such a way that our 
our brains can create protector parts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure that they always keep that inner child safe though. Good. They're trying to keep us safe as a whole, Mm -hmm. but they abandon that inner child and it's very lonely. Our exiled part. Yeah. It needs compassion from us. It needs to be nurtured and know that it's lovable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that she's not unworthy or he or she's not unworthy or not cared mm-hmm. for, not lovable, not good enough, all those things that the exile part feels. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just, it's just such a beautiful process to me that we can go in there and really be with and as counselors here at true vine you know being with you and having you tune in to your own self and being curious and compassionate towards the exiles of the self and that's what the model is doing and in efit we are taking the older wiser self and going back to that trauma, whether you were six, 10, 12, whatever age, we're going back to that event with you, with your older, wiser self, and mm-hmm. we're comforting that part of self. So that's how these two are kind of coming for me anyways. What about you, Rachel? Yes. You're describing it very well. Yeah. What Richard Schwartz and the internal family systems model is calling Um, self-energy and self-compassion, this warm, loving part of us. The emotionally focused model is calling older, wiser, other. Yeah, we're kind of noticing those are the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they both work and they're both effective and the contributions they're giving our field are remarkable to me yeah yeah and the managers or protectors and firefighters you know those are all synonymous are from the eft attachment frame like the attachment responses you know when we talk about the anxious attachment response avoidant attachment response i think those are how those managers show up mm-hmm. well stated good good connecting those attachment styles being those protector and firefighter parts well mm-hmm. if you're gonna hurt me i'm gonna go over here yeah i mean i'm gonna have a manager that pulls me away and makes me avoid because it's too painful or overwhelming or i'm gonna have a manager that makes me get bigger and louder and demand uh-huh. because you're right yeah puff up yes Brene Brown talks about puffing up uh-huh I puff up <laughs> yes <laughs> like I'm just gonna puff up this is how I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I shrink and go away <laughs> and goes into the corner yep I'm just gonna be like doo, 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 don't mind me <laughs> I'm <not gonna> <laughs> yeah I'm out here <laughs> yeah oh that's good that's good yeah and this is i was reading the the scripture miss rachel and i believe when christ told us that it's in the book of john i do believe my theologians and pastors can correct me if i'm wrong the kingdom of god is within you Mm -hmm. the kingdom of god is within us Christ told them that and I believe just from a counselor's perspective that what he's saying is that is the compassion that is the grace that you're offering the part of you that's not so beautiful that you don't want to look at Mm -hmm. that's hiding Mm -hmm. yeah yeah the part of you that is capable of unconditional love. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that part. The the spirit comes within and says, you are worthy. You are beautiful. You are generous. You are kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool emulates all of these. Oh, all of so do you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I'm working with clients, you know, I've been noticing recently when they access that part, they'll say, oh, I have this warm feeling right here and they kind of like emotion to their chest mm. and it's awesome I get cold chills every time I'm like that's good that's that's compassion that's self-love what do you want to do with that energy towards mm -hmm. this part of you that we're working with right now mm -hmm. yeah so it's good stuff yes it's beautiful to experience and be a part of oh because we're both just so honored to be doing what we do to have people trust us you know as they dig into these parts of themselves that they have never loved before yeah. in their life you know mm -hmm. yeah these exiled parts yeah, it's a beautiful way to, to approach self in a gracious, compassionate way. And I was, you know, as I was praying and thinking about our podcast and how much grace that Rachel has for me, I just love that because on Saturday, just as a, as a side bit, Rachel and I plan on doing the podcast on Saturday. And I was trying to get the Yeti microphone to work effectively so that my listeners could hear um, well. And no matter what I tried, I cannot get it to work. And that was my protector part coming out or over-functioning and trying so hard. And Rachel just distilled that part of myself. I'm here you're okay i'm just having coffee we're good and that she, was the truth yeah just happy to be here and hang out yeah so thank you for being there for me in that way and comforting that part of myself of course i'm gonna cry <laughs> <laughs> oh this is you know just a peek into what it's like to have, you know, when you're able to have this connection with yourself mm -hmm. and you can form these connections with other people. We have compassion for ourselves. We have compassion for others. Absolutely. If you oh. already have compassion for others, if you can have compassion for yourself, that compassion for others is just going to get stronger. Yeah. I was just looking at the, the scripture I wanted to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what she's saying is so true is how do we, um, get, how do we, um, dissolve hate? Um, and the mm -hmm. way to dissolve hate is love. Yeah. Perfect love drives out all fear. And, you know, often culture is in the fight or flight, right? That chaotic attachment. So I got to fight and flight. Well, mm -hmm. If you would have compassion for those parts of you that you dislike or hate in self, you would bring out that exile and unburdening it. And then you would feel love and care for self and others. You think that's what he's telling us? I do. Yeah. I'm like writing notes as you're talking because that's so powerful and spot on you said perfect love drives out all fear because that usually is the burden that this these exiled parts are carrying some type of fear i'm afraid of what people will think if they see this part of me you know i'm afraid of what that means about me that people don't accept this part of me or it bothers or makes them uncomfortable mm -hmm. yeah and that is usually beginning in childhood, right? Yeah. With gender norms, unfortunately, you know, 
little boys are told to not cry to you know that that any display of soft vulnerable emotion is weakness it's pathetic they're less manly they need to toughen up right and so for those who are presenting as male or or perceived as male by others this uh you know sadness gets exiled Mm. pretty early on i don't want to i'm not allowed to show that i'm sad or hurt or vulnerable in any way so i'll just be tough and angry instead and that drives others away Mm -hmm. it can yeah yeah and when they present that way in couples therapy it's like what's underneath that anger right now you're showing what's really happening for you it's usually sad and Mm -hmm. scared yeah Mm -hmm. and that's okay yeah yeah and for women right those presenting as female or perceived as female it's um Mm-hmm. vitality and energy and independence makes up people uncomfortable right if you're a little girl and you're out stomping around in the mud or hitting things they're like no you need to sit be quiet be pretty. play with these dolls yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. boys boys get out on that football field and fight each other and you know get yeah. dirty but girl mm. do that All right and so we learn to yeah shrink ourselves take up less space mm. be quiet passive submissive right that's where the people pleasing tendencies come out want to get it right for everybody thanks for bringing up that gender norm or cultural um superimposed gender norm yeah yeah Yeah. i never fit the mold um most of us don't it's not fair mold (laughs) (laughs) i was so rowdy yeah athletic rowdy sporty yeah if a little boy's hyper bouncing off the walls we're like boys will be boys if a little girl is it's like hey sit down quit it you need to calm down yeah you're too loud. You talk mm. too much. If you had attention deficit hyperactivity, you certainly had all that as a girl. And yeah. it's just be who you are. Be who you are. And and that's where I, I was when I was processing, Rachel, if I can share that scripture is when mm-hmm. my camera I'm adjusting it when they um they were stoning in the book of john when they were trying to stone the prostitute um Mm -hmm. in the scripture you know jesus says who of you is without sin i think he's saying who within you all doesn't have an exile part of yourself who's feeling hurt and scared throw down your rocks Because who are you really hitting? Who are you really casting a stone at? Who do you think? Who do you think they're casting a stone at? Their exile, right? Something that makes them uncomfortable, right? Yeah. When we see ourselves, right? The part of us that we don't like, that exile Mm -hmm. in someone else, we, we get upset and uncomfortable. Well stated, Rachel. Yeah, and so they're throwing the stone, right? And they're really throwing it, what Christ says, and he writes it down in the sand is, well, excuse me. (laughs) Have you looked at yourself? Have you looked at all your parts? Well, you're stoning yourself when you, you cast stones. So he's saying, let's come, let's go alongside and just be with each other 
and have grace and compassion and care. Mm -hmm. And that is perfect love driving out all fear. Fear of yeah. the exile, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because exile goes into hiding or puffed up protest. Yeah, yeah. You so like that connection? I love that, yes. It's making me think of this um, shirt. Someone I know has a sweatshirt that says, you can't throw stones when you're washing feet. And so mm. we are taking the time to wash the feet of all of our parts in this process. Love it. I just love that. <sighs> just marinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we learn very early on in our lives what emotions, behaviors, needs trigger others based on how they respond to us. And if they respond negatively, if they get upset or uncomfortable, or tell us no, stop, mm -hmm. then we begin to exile that part of us. Mm. Put it away so that we can be accepted. Wow, that's beautiful, Rachel. Yes, that's true. So that's the attachment longings and unmet needs. So if you're your primary caregiver sees me be rowdy and says, calm down, girls, don't be rowdy. That part of myself, she has to go away. Mm -hmm. Can't yeah. be that. Part. Yeah. And our, our goal is to put away the negative, um, to avoid the negative emotion that we feel by getting that upset or uncomfortable response from a caregiver or a peer. But what happens is these exiles, they're not all negative. They're not all bad. There are no bad parts. And so, you know, you're avoiding feeling shame or embarrassment by exiling this rowdy part, but this part of you holds that vitality and that spunk and that charisma and that, you know, energy that makes a great leader, right? That's right. So yeah, we don't want to exile those things. We need that. If you see those parts in your child, whether it's female or male, nurture it love it validate it validate that part of your child don't tell that don't tell your child that you shouldn't be this way people won't like you hogwash hogwash mm -mm. be your true self mm -hmm. yeah walk in that part of yourself be embodied in who you are and who God or your higher power as you know him or her or whatever the universe, however you believe, mm -hmm. as you are. Be who you are. Embody that person. And when you felt like, oh gosh, you can't show too much enthusiasm. Oh my goodness, Rachel. Did you see where Taylor Swift said that in a clip? Have you seen that? Oh, I haven't seen that, but I believe it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of us feel that way. She said, why do people, something like, why do people judge you if you're excited? Why do, you know, you're, you're excited and you're enjoying yourself. People are like giving you a hard time. She said, no, be excited. If it's exciting to you, embrace that emotion. Mm -hmm. I love that she, she's so intuitive about herself. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's because the things like excitement, hope, joy, having a positive outlook on life and the world are parts of what gets exiled. Ah, 
I think that's why, right? And so then you're excited and someone sees that. Mm -hmm. And just like we were saying earlier, that's a part of their exile. They're, they're trying so hard not to access that unknowingly because Correct. they don't want to get hurt. And so they're like, Ugh. you know, they get upset. They're uncomfortable by that. Yeah. You know? well, as an EFIT therapist and being trained in it, which I'm going to do the IFS eventually, I'm sure you will too, is mm -hmm. I'm going to go in there, take my older, wiser self, right? From the EFIT perspective. And then from Schwartz perspective is that inner self, the self that has compassion, curiosity, and care. I'm going to go in mm -hmm. there. Hey, you could be excited. You can, you can enjoy your time. You can be happy. You can do cartwheels. Like you were saying, mm -hmm. joy. Bring that yeah. up. Yeah. So I've been working with people. When we go, when we get past all the protectors and we're working with an exiled part, you know, at first it's like, oh yeah, this is the part of me that's, you know, so sad and heartbroken and feels so lost and alone the more we dig into it, people will say things like, you know what? I really miss this part. This is also the part of me that has hope for the future. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt that in so long. I miss her, you know? Yeah. And Rachel, do you think the self-sabotage that, you know, so many folks or coaches and psychologists use in the realm is self-sabotage is that not the firefighter part of self that comes up and i think so that's a good point i hadn't thought about it that way yeah of how we make connections mm -hmm. that's good yeah. yeah so when you're working so eloquently with your folks they're like oh i miss that part of me Mm -hmm. I kept self-sabotaging. My firefighter showed up and I went over there and got drunk or did something, or maybe it wasn't drinking. Maybe it was something else. Yeah. Yep. So what, what more would we like to share about exiles with our listeners? Um, I think I have a lot of notes here. Good. So we talked about like our earliest exiles are the inner child from childhood to gender norms. And then we kind of touched on a little bit uh, the, the second type of exile that can be created in adulthood. And that is more of what the EFT would call an attachment injury, mm -hmm. right? Any needs or emotions that were expressed if you were really vulnerable with someone or in a vulnerable situation and expressed a need and mm -hmm. you got shut down or betrayed or rejected then that's that will create an exile as well from that experience oh so that's how that happens in marriage is when that person rejects that part of yourself and then you put it into exile. That's mm -hmm. an attachment injury to the bonds. You're like, well, I'll never show this part of me again. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'll never I, need you again. I'll never open up to you again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was sad, you just laughed at me. So guess what? Hmm. I'm not going to be vulnerable again. Yeah. You'll never see my sadness. Mm -hmm. no one will ever see my sadness because if I can't trust you who can I trust yeah yeah and that's where the self shows up and says hey it's okay to feel what you're feeling yeah it's okay that compassionate self shows up from his theory is that it's okay it's okay that you felt sad or hurt and scared. You're still, mm -hmm. you're still you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's beautiful. Thank you for bringing that up. I remember hearing that part. I didn't, I didn't remember it today, but thank you. Yeah. And so when we're 
when to work on healing these exiled parts yeah we're trying to look at them objectively mm -hmm. from a distance right because we don't want them to overwhelm us we don't want to be in that part you know we want to be in our that like we keep saying that compassionate nurturing part of us mm -hmm. and imagine that we're looking at this past version of us mm -hmm. this exiled part that feels alone and sad right and that's how we nurture that part and so linda and i in therapy might say something like how do you see that part of you mm. what age are they mm -hmm. what's their facial expression what's their body language mm -hmm. you know and then we'll check in how do you feel towards this part of you, mm -hmm. you know? And if the person says, oh, I feel angry towards that part of me, or I feel scared, then we know there's a manager in the room and we're going to try to get it to step back until they say in something like, oh, I feel so bad for them. Right? When, we, when we access the empathy, we know that we're in that loving, healing part mm -hmm. and we go from there. That's good. Yeah. And the managers in the therapy that I'm, as I'm learning internal family therapy systems, um, I want to honor that manager. Oh, okay. So they're not willing to go there. Right. Safety's not present. How can we create safety? Can we talk to that part of you that's protecting your exile? And it's so overwhelming to folks to be there with that part of themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's such a beautiful model to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very um, visual. Yeah. Process mm -hmm. that, you know, I feel like, which for me is good because I'm a very visual learner type person. I think for some folks that can be hard to visualize a part mm -hmm. of themselves. And when folks come up with, with me in therapy, when they say, yeah, I, I can't make contact with that part. That happens, right? Yeah. yeah. They can't see my older, wiser self. Okay, that means there's a block and that's what we talk about in EFIS. There's some blocks there. Mm -hmm. The blocks are the managers, managers. in the room. Yeah. And so as your co-regulator in therapy, we're, we're alongside you and helping the exile to feel safe and allowing the protectors to take a little rest, take a break, that it's safe to take a break. And it's a beautiful way of making contact with your inner person, your inner person. Mm -hmm. How does that how do you think that helps folks that are listening to hear that? I, I think that it, it helps people make sense of their inner dialogue because that's what we're really doing is we're giving pieces of our inner dialogue names mm -hmm. and images and it helps to kind of untangle this web yes that we've got going on in our minds beautiful rachel beautiful i love that untangling the webs yeah Oof, it's good yeah people walk away i hear so like over and over again people just keep saying how helpful this has been to them mm -hmm. and how it helps them feel less i'll say in quotes crazy they're like I, you know i feel crazy when i've got these parts of me that are not getting along like i can't make a decision because part of me feels this way part of me feels that way and they're like and now i get it now i understand mm -hmm. i got like three different managers and none of them get along like <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes yeah the duality and people are like man you can't walk in your truth it's like 
Right, because they got managers showing up telling me to do A, then the other ones tell me to do B, and they're going in opposite directions. Right, and then as these managers are fighting, they're not managing, and so the exile storms the gate, and now I'm having this emotional breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to get permission from those managers in therapy. And once that's established, we can make more sense of it. The more trauma you have, the more exile parts, trauma. And the more exiles, the more managers. So it is just, it is a web. Yeah. And I love how he, he words it unburdening. Mm -hmm. Unburdening. Can you imagine walking around? I, I'm thinking of Jesus saying, my yoke is light. Oh, yeah. We're lightening the yokes of our exiles. <sighs> inviting them back to have a seat at the table. You know, yeah. Back to the supper. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. The yoke is light. So that's that unburdening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What beautiful yeah. therapy. Yeah. And if you think about it, our entire body, right, functions Mm -hmm. as a series of systems, cardiovascular system, digestive system, you know, nervous system, it could go on and on. So it only makes sense that our mind would also be a system made Mm -hmm. up of parts that are all trying to work together but we experience, you know, a hurtful event or something traumatic and that disrupts the system. Mm -hmm. And so here we are trying to get this system back in harmony. I love that. That's good, Rachel. Yeah. So if you, you know, you're a listener and you're wanting to unburden and you know, create safety for those parts of self, the exile, the inner child that got hurt. Um, we would love to be a part of that therapeutic process for you. And um, we're glad that you're listening to our podcast. Yes. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Bye. Bye.